ಚೇತನಯಾಯಿ ಮೇ ಮೇ ಗೃಹಾಗಾಯಿ ಮೇ ಮೇ ಪಶವಶ್ಚ ಮೇ ಮೇ ಇತ್ಥಂ ನರೋ ಮೇಷ ಸಮಾನ ಧರ್ಮ ಮೇ ಮೇ ಕರ ಕಾಲ ವೃಕೇಣ ನೀತ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೇ ಮೇ ಇನ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ and it also it's little like the bleating of sheep this wife is mine these children are mine these houses are mine these cattle are mine like that the man shouts the man who in this man keeps on saying mine mine is on par with sheep which is killed without knowing by the time of wolf hmm beautiful <laughs> yeah because you know in hindi we say main 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 means i and and, and the bleating of a goat is the same main main you know similar and uh, yeah and what is this wolf which comes it is the death call when it comes it finishes us it takes away all me all i but then it is too late if by whatever method we make this silence our eternal companion then nothing can take away your eternal companion from you because whatever people will take they can't take away silence from you that is our real possession if you look into india's freedom struggle so many freedom fighters when they were put in jail for years sometimes like 14 years they came out at the other end as saints so many of them because living in that jail in solitude on their own they contemplated on that pure self in whatever form they did it so they made the best use of that in a way they call it solitary confinement and that solitary confinement is a blessing for a sadhak for a seeker you get food and no other company except the company of your pure silence whether it was uh, hanuman prasad poddar who started geeta press which produces still so much of a spiritual literature on at cost without any profit so many of them there was one saint in pondicherry during bhagwan's time all so he he was also um in jail and then i think he moved to pondicherry arbindo arbindo yeah arbindo gosh so many of them if you look into the freedom fighters history you know subramanya bharti and bharti Oh, she's writing so something wonderful all in tamil but all about the oneness or sometimes she praises this god of that god but finally it comes and says that i am one with you nothing else is there mm. and so many of these freedom fighter used to come to bhagwan during those times 
डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद सी राजगोपालाचारी सरोजनी नायडू बट मेन थिंग अबाउट ऑल दीज पीपल वर दे वर दे वर नॉट डूइंग एनी थिंग फॉर देर ओन सेल्फ दे वर ऑल सेल्फलेस सोल्स सो वेदर दे वर डूइंग फॉर द कंट्री और डूइंग फॉर द बिगर कॉज और दे वर डूइंग सो दे फाइनली दे ऑल गॉर इन टू स्पिरिचुअलिटी सो डीप where there is no selfish ego there is no difference between god and us selfishness leaves and god manifest god is always manifesting even in our selfishness it is manifesting if you read bhagavad gita in bhagavad gita you know, bhagwan says um, first he says about all the good things he is and then he also says talks about all the bad things he is he said even the gambling is i am that gambling because uh, the whole uh, geeta was on the um, addiction of yudhishthir on gambling and then the whole problem cropped up so in even behind the wicked person also that energy is there but that energy is just energy and then ego plays it in and makes it so ugly but that energy is untainted pure it is not manipulative be with that energy which is untainted uninvolved which is only witnessing everything unfolding in front of these eyes so when we see from these eyes then we are accomplice of our mind then the mind judges mind tells us the story about whatever we see so whatever we see becomes very conditioned but if we watch from awareness we give up this conditioning of the mind then we don't see forms forms are there but they have no effect good forms bad forms only energy is left and uh, even in in uh, this realization in settling is this energy everyone goes through this stage in which any negative energy bad energy you hate you don't want to get there or, or you avoid it because you become so sensitive to to this energy around you and this intuitiveness is so strong even without talking to someone you understand what type of energy they are carrying as if it is their scent perfume so something in us clearly makes us away from those situations those persons and a seeker is always happy in solitude unless he finds energy which brings him or her in the heart so most of the outings or meeting people and gossiping they just drop we don't have to do anything about it it just drops there is no interest no fun no attraction to any of those talks and when i say we have aversion hate we hate situation we were don't hate person you can still love person but you hate what they do and you can even correct them if you want to or if they ask you abiding in energy we also don't know 
energy doesn't know how what will happen next but it is fearless whatever will happen it knows it can never be wrong because there is no person who is planning deciding working whom to meet whom not to meet who should be on the guest list for energy everyone is one only everyone is on guest list everyone is a, it's a free invitation for everyone as awareness we can talk on everyone's behalf from everyone's heart because we are not in one body we are in everything every body this is unity in diversity and not limited to the human body everything even things which we call as non living everything is living on that substrata which is consciousness it is living whether the thing is living or not who cares this play is is possible on that living entity you can call it a purusha you know in hindi there is a beautiful word purusha means you can call it a man or a person so this whole is just one person infinite person and the dynamic nature we call it prakriti prakriti means which keeps changing nature it it is an offshoot of that purusha only from that this prakriti comes and all these minds delve into different things one is a scientist other is a mathematician someone is a sculpturist beautiful energy comes into different ways and it gives freedom of thought that freedom can be good or freedom can be bad it can be constructive it can be destructive so krishna says i am all the he talks about all the good things he is and then he also says i am all the bad things also because first you read first time that book and holy book and you think all the auspicious things is he and then after few verses then he starts talking about all the bad things also he he takes credit of good and bad everything but that energy is always pure behind these acts the person doing a bad act doesn't know this but energy knows once we start looking within what we did 10 years 20 years ago something foolish stupid we will laugh on it how was it possible it was only possible because we were in sleep just like an alcoholic if he does something stupid and he doesn't even remember next day that he did that and then he can only repent or say sorry maya is also a toxicity toxication toxication of desires toxication of attachments and all at the level of mind only at the level of thought only even a person who rapes or murder or do any crime it happens first in a form of thought only a thought which he buys he follows and he does crime
Mind can be our friend, but mind can be the worst enemy. People can even kill this body when they are unhappy. Rather than asking this question, who is unhappy? Why to punish this body and kill it? This body is not saying I am am unhappy. Why to kill it? Why to punish body? And when this body is not asking to be killed, then who is the one who is unhappy in the body? It's only a thought that I am unhappy. Negative thoughts Believing on negative thoughts Question is, who is the one who believes on these thoughts? Who is that? Is it me? Do I have to believe all my thoughts? And are they my thoughts? Where do they come from? What purpose they have? We never ask these questions. And let's say they come to us and I don't accept any thought, what will happen? Will I turn mad? Or I can't function? Then then to understand who is asking that I can't function, like I am am I this body who will not be able to function if I don't follow my thoughts? When we ask these two questions deeply, who is functioning and to whom these thoughts are, it will take us to the right place in our heart. And we realize I am nothing. In reality, we are no thing. All thoughts are illusion. All actions of the body are not more important than any play. Even the People in this world whom we think they are the real gem, and they are doing discoveries and inventions and scientists or whatever construction, creative, they are picking up the relative knowledge which Absolute has created and we are trying to see why this is happening, what is the truth behind this happening, all our life we are teasing apart, intricacies of life. But we never look, who is that? We behave like ignorant fools after relative knowledge of small things and spending whole life in it and not knowing who am I. When we know who am I, we get answer to everything. That relative knowledge which we think is so important is only our mind, our ego, which gives importance to it. Go behind source. Go for the source. All the answers in the source. If you don't want to call source as God, doesn't matter. It is the name given by us. Call it self. You are that self.
It is not a concept. It is not a philosophy. It is you. Your identity is at stake. It is like a person who has habit of working every day. And when it is Saturday and Sunday, he still goes to office, he opens the office, he has got a key, he sits on his chair, he tries to do everything. And the cleaner comes and says, today is a holiday, why don't you come go back home? No need to do anything. Go back home. But the man says, no, I am just in a habit of doing. I can't go back home. I have to do it. I'm a doer. I'm a achiever. I'm a karma yogi. That's, what the, that's the way people say. Some people have heard this karma yoga. They always talk about karma yogi. They are doing all the stupid stuff in their life. They say they are karma yogis. They are earning from themselves. They say they are karma yogis. They are selfish people. They say, I'm a karma yogi. So this... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this path of karma yoga is being most tampered, most misused, abused by people who want to gain power, people with rajasic minds, restless mind. Come back home. Stay as non-doer. If you are convinced that you will always stay as a non-doer, you will attain supreme bliss instantaneously. Because it is the Absolute which is running the show. Only your ego tells you you are doing. This is I thought only. I am the body thought. I am doing, I am searching, I am a seeker. We are this pure awareness, which is always a witness. Mind thinks, body does. We only witness. Body is conditioned. Body has a time limit. Body will decay and die. Mind keeps changing. It sleeps, then it gets awakened, then it has dreams, it gets confused. And sometimes it is calm, sometimes it is happy. Happy thoughts means happy mind, negative thoughts means negative mind, unhappy mind. We are none of it. Mind can be unhappy, you can be in bliss. Know this truth. Leave this company. Give up this association. Give up whole identity with this gadget called mind-body. If it works, use it. If it doesn't work, watch it. When the body is sick, what do you do? You just lie down, wait for it to recover. Same is with mind. If it is too restless, just watch it. It's like a bad weather. Now the pl plane can't take off. Where is David here? I think he must be in a flight, but anyway. What can you do? Just wait.
our identification with mind makes us restless. Mind depends on so many factors, how you slept, what are the conditions around us, what food you ate. It can produce any thought from the past. Mind saw someone similar to the person who irritates you most. The mind gets agitated. Watch these things unfolding in you as an observer. You will laugh on all what mind brings. And our observation will make us detached from the mind. They say there is a bird, Rajhans, which separates milk from water if two are mixed. I don't know how it happens, but it is very true for our Atman. That is that Paramhans, the moment we touch it, it separates us from what we are not. All our life we are fooled by this body. We think we are this body. We have been given a name, a unique name, a unique body, a unique mind. And we live a separate existence throughout our life. And one day we die. If we start observing all what happens at mind, everything we watch, even this conditioned mind, we watch as a pure witness, uninvolved, just watching this mind. It's not that we are paranoid and we have to watch, but thoughts come so we can't save it will not come, it will come. Just watch as an observer. And soon you will be free from all these mind games and body identification and bliss will take over everything. This is a pathless path. See what is happening in this path. You, whether you establish or not, you stay as self. You start where you have to end. All other path starts at duality. They tell you to do first postures, then do some Nadi Shuddhi Pranayam, then do Dharna Dhyan Samadhi. And one day after 40 years, you may achieve. Otherwise, there is next birth. Here, there is no choice. You stay as choiceless awareness. And then whatever garbage we have collected will be thrown on us. We just have to watch. This is the shortest, quickest, direct path. Give up your identification with things what you are not, right now. And then, what is practice? Practice is to just stay. So whatever pulls of desires and attachment comes, can be watched.
you have to be strong you have to have determination it is not a job of a faint hearted person because anything can come now anything can challenge and mind can throw all sorts of challenges and situations can change here you are not changing your name you are giving up your name now you have no name a body has a name and you just watch it in india people who take sanyas they change their name they get a new name perhaps this is a method to give up your previous identity but new name can take up new identity that are now i am a sanyasi on path of self inquiry you don't give even this chance for the ego to take up new identity you just stay as nothing in spite of body in spite of mind in spite of the same situation because you are not going to leave this situation like buddha you are just staying wherever you are see the purest teaching given by bhagwan he left his home but not to realize self he was already a realized being and he didn't use any method it just came on him understand these two principles in his life but it seems contrary to these two things he never ask us to leave wherever we are you stay as householder or whatever you do and whatever he says if it's your destiny you might leave but no need to do that in the second is he gave us a practice being an observer could be an issue to start with but as the time goes weeks months maybe a year maximum then it becomes natural because it is natural body is aropit it's on covering on us it's on top of us and the mind and intellect and emotions we are none of these things and it's a one way ticket now you cannot be fooled once you are observer you have observed for a pretty strong pretty long time with your efforts once it becomes sahaj natural effortless nobody can fool you now you are out of the grip of maya illusion
it could be one satsang for someone it could be couple of years for someone but not longer than that because this is a constant practice you wake up and it continues and you sleep at night i always say you continue till you sleep but it continues even in dream it continues in deep sleep it continues you put efforts from morning you wake up till you go to bed but then that effort takes you through other two stages of mind with that momentum you are brahman that awareness on which mind plays with its conditioning body does things or stays in rest depending on the play it has been given there is an act given to the body in this play whenever you are confused just keep a picture of bhagwan just watch his eyes how where is he looking some people are stupid they have described he is looking outside the window he is looking far he is not looking anywhere you know when you sit thoughtless people come and ask you what are you thinking egoistic people have no clue he is in sahaj samadhi all the time now eyes will be looking somewhere but not looking if you understand his eyes you can be free very easily he is not looking anywhere you can just make out of his eyes the eyes are established in self they are not judging they are not doing anything you know so many times people came to bhagwan and when they came and saw him they couldn't see his body and then after few minutes they start seeing there is a body what is this phenomena he is firmly established in that bodiless awareness all the time when you are open to that then you will not see that you will only see awareness you will only see light of all lights when you go to arunachala you see hill or you see energy you can see hill but hill has no power it is the energy same as self here is the self here densely there that is why people go there and they can't leave I was speaking to Michael Heiberger once and he said he just came to a visit to India and he came to Arunachala but then he never left if you can't feel that energy then you have to fix yourself 
grace is in full flow and it's also here that is why in arunachala puranam it says even if you think about arunachala from wherever you are your liberation is guaranteed even in bhagwan time and even now so many people who never met him who never been to india just contemplating on him have liberated and it will continue this way always because that ramana is we all our heart that brahman is ramana like it has other thousand names you can call him prophet muhammad or jesus christ or ram or krishna doesn't matter it is the same energy but it is so palpable because he left body in 1950 people who saw him are still alive and then you can see all these places otherwise other powers were there but now people call mythology and you know half people believe half not this is all so recent power of self attention is very very powerful and when it becomes dense in us no thought survives and even if a thought survives it is a distant noise no attachment no ownership no effect it cannot take away our bliss understand all bliss is in self attention in pure silence and it is not affected by what is your mental condition whether you are adhd whether you had depression whether you suffer from anxiety because who is suffering from anxiety this is the question who has adhd it is mind not me all the modifications of mind are external mind is matter i am changeless i know some religions some spiritual philosophical groups they talk about as mind is us you fix your mind that's all here we are giving up relationship with mind completely we are not fixing it we are ignoring it whatever mind has done to you 
it was your wrong identity mind cannot do anything to you if the self needs to be fixed then what is the purpose of knowing that self better to discard that self so many teachings are so wrong do you think we have to fix god if we say brahman is god or self is god we have to fix it first it is always same it is changeless it is pure eternal just identify yourself with that and give up your identification as the owner of mind that's all it's a case of mistake and identity nothing else you give up wrong identification and you are in bliss nothing to fix nothing to correct nothing to control there are so many books about power of mind we are only giving power to mind we are that power take away that power unplug your mind from your power just stay as power pure energy identify your mind as garbage which you cannot fix you have to just burn it bhagwan says mano nasha just finish it why when our close friends do something which we don't like it hurt us because we have attachment they invite all the friends except you you feel bad because of attachment if you have no attachment with mind then whatever it brings or not brings who cares stay in this emptiness this emptiness is alive with bliss it is it is it is life mind can say what should i do with emptiness that's true mind cannot do anything with emptiness it will finish off it is like you are strangulating mind in emptiness it will not survive mind is full of drama it needs a drama that's why movies have a plot you can't make a simple movie it always has twists and people love these twist same is with news but god is very simple very humble i call god as that energy nothing else which is in all of us it never plays any games it is not manipulative it accepts things as it is it has no expectations it is without any desire it is pure wisdom it is innocent like a child 
but it is pure intelligence it understands everything more minutely than your sharpest mind and yet it accepts everything with love in spite of knowing all the shortcomings of egoistic mind it accepts everything with compassion and love the reason is because it knows everything is me only and all these waves are just transient restlessness before the play starts we are all one during the play also we are one at the end also we will be one it is the same awareness which is doing different plays kabir says beautifully he says a policeman is running trying to chase a thief they can't fool me both are god he is just playing one is thief other is policeman nothing what is there nothing is happening how beautifully he understands who can fool kabir most of the gyanis you see were never educated hardly had any primary education because for this you don't need any elementary bookish knowledge to know self you don't need any book just to stay as an observer even when things around you irritate your mind just watch it have compassion for this mind also you have misused this mind so much you have asked this mind so many things for so long now it will also show you some tantrums let it be momentum of our desires and attachments will make it talking to us in form of thoughts and feelings and emotions but don't give more desires and attachments so it continues now just be an observer as if you have retired completely you have given up everything as if you are living but not living and see the magic of a dead person in a living body it is fun no ownership of mind no ownership of body when yamraj will come which is called as the god of death even he will not be able to find you to take you so all the gyanis they deceive even yamraj he comes he can't find them because they, there is no one living 
So death cannot touch you. You become deathless, fearless. Because fear is of death. What death takes away? Tell me. What? Only your identity with the body? When you are already free, you have no identity with body, then what will death will take away? Even death cannot kill your mind. Mind goes, it stays even after death. You have even killed that. You have done more job than what death can do for you. Even Yamraj cannot do that. You have done more than what death can do. Then what death will do? Nothing. Our established life as awareness will stay as awareness. Nothing will go. Where will you go? Awareness is infinite. Whatever you see from wherever, how far, it's everything is awareness. This hell and heaven concept is only for ego. Because ego is that individuality which might go to different places. Aware has no place to go. It is in hell, it is in heaven, it is everywhere. Hell and heaven are only for ego, only for forms. Hell and heaven are only in dream, only in time and space. Awareness is beyond time and space. It is a different domain. I use internet and I think perhaps we all use internet. But people say there is a dark web also. I have no clue. So two parallel things are running in the same The moment you kill this ego, you are free from all this game of hell and heaven and this loke and that place and this and karma and whatever, all these theories are just useless. You become free from all the laws which govern this world and beyond. Because these laws are only for this game. If you analyze the restless mind, it is our own creation with desires and attachments. If we don't add any more desires and attachment, it will settle down. That muddy water 
all the mud will settle, it will become clean, pure. So many people say that they have been fooled or they were the victims of fraud. Only a jnani cannot be fooled. If you don't want anything, then how can you be fooled? Just stay as observer to things happening. Be observer to all thoughts happening, all emotions happening. And I want to warn everyone that the one who comes and goes, because this is the question I get day in and day out from all seekers when I talk to them individually. They say, I am so good and then this thing happened and then I slipped out of myself. They have made self as their holiday home. They go into that, they are relaxed and then they come out. It is not an object. You can't come and go. If there is coming and going, you are always in ego mode. Ego can also be happy sometimes. So many happy faces in this world. On Facebook, you can see all of those happy faces. The one which you are, once it becomes effortless, it is like a hatchling when the egg shell is broken and comes out. Now you can't put it back. Now it cannot go back into the coverings of body. Body doesn't mean this body. Body is all this intellectual sheath, mind sheath, pranamaya kosha, anandamaya kosha, all these koshas which are all creation of this illusory word. You cannot put it back in. Now it is free, it is in, it is out, it is everywhere. It might be hiding in Hridayam, but once you know it, you know it everywhere. It is the same current, same energy, same vibration. Now nothing can fool you. Mind now has no power. I would say, you sit on your egg of this energy, on your heart, long enough so it breaks open and wait long enough. Don't make any prior conclusions with slight bliss or happiness or contentment. That will come. You go to a hill station, you climb up the hill. You start getting breeze, cool breeze. But wait till you reach on the top and the journey ends and no efforts are needed. And continue your efforts. It will stop on its own. In India, I have met so many sannyasis, sages, who are jnanis, who are enlightened. But they keep saying the japa all the time. You can see their hand is moving, their lips are moving. In spite of jnani, they continue. Because it becomes so, they are not doing it, just happening. 
now you can see how much effort sadhana they have done that it continues even now we all have to learn from these sages like we learn in this business world worldly life how people are cunning how to earn money whatever same way we can learn from sages and saints how they live how they behave how they have achieved how they live after knowing everything don't understand underestimate the power of practice it is very powerful you're playing with the maya which has engulfed whole world billions of people noble laureate smart people and then you want to get out of it do you think it's a small task you will do every day for 10 minutes and you will be out what a foolish idea so many people i meet they say i do 20 minutes in morning 20 minutes in evening and i'm feeling so much of bliss they fool themselves and they are fooling me also yes 20 minutes can give you this bliss but is it sustainable all your life without doing anything can you do in a way then the practice ends and it's the end game and you are that knowledge and you are the knower and you are search ends forever it's not to say to anyone that my search has ended and i am and light and nothing like that it's not that but that 100% contentment in your heart from where there is there is no movement externally you and the stillness are same one all the time not to impress anyone not even to impress this body no one to impress whatever it is it is and how it manifest in you would be unique you might be feeling more cold and putting two double shawls i have seen some sanyasis or you can be naked without clothes i am not saying that that has to happen but how that energy flows how you can make out love it respect it have reverence for this energy in our heart do prayer to it be with it the best way to be with it is in silence all the time when people are abusing you look i'm pretty sure no one is getting abused but you are getting abused day and day in and day out you stay in this silence be with that ignoring all external noises be with it love it if you stay in the company of your heart you become that it takes over everything and then no noise of your thoughts or people or arguments reaches you i'm not saying that people around you might change they might change if they are having some wisdom some opening they might change but they might be completely closed people who knows they might hang you on a cross <laughs> 
who knows but that energy is so pure be with that wherever it takes you be like a dry leaf in the wind don't worry what will happen maximum you will leave this body yeah one day you will leave this body it's not a big deal even the unenlightened person never dies then what about you he or she gets a new body nothing gets destroyed and what to worry and for whom don't look for too many teachings and books and different types of practices i'll tell you if we are born as just one single person in on this earth we can find god within us <coughs> because that self in us is our guru god everything is in one body everything all teachings all practices we just have to trust give up all mundane activities of your mind and its tricks just surrender i am pretty sure if you surrender you will get food on your table still if you don't then ask me i'll give you food for your life there are so many free places even in melbourne you know where you can get free food why to worry what for see bhagwan he was enlightened he was not after enlightenment for years he was getting one meal a day maximum living in a cave all his life but in supreme bliss i would say pick up a guru like bhagwan if you want enlightenment otherwise there are five star gurus you know i think he's seven star <laughs> he's king of the kings the one who is desireless you cannot fool that person you cannot give any gift which can make him happy maybe gifts can make him unhappy but not happy my only suggestion to everyone is if you i don't know what is your background and why you're listening but if you have come to this satsang we call it bhagwan ramana satsang you just hold on to bhagwan's feet I don't know what Bhagwan will say, but I guarantee that you will be. It will be done for you. Everything. That is the power of him. Even right now, it is more power than when he was alive, because he is everywhere. He is in everyone's heart. in everyone's heart as us only that purity spoke out for our benefit and it is grace that we were able to listen to him 
to see his face whenever in doubt pick up his teaching and just follow it and if you don't want to read don't read just see his picture see his eyes if you don't want to do that just say ramana in your mind whatever your life takes you wherever you go whatever you do if liberation is the most important thing in your life i would say only one thing never leave ramana just remember in whatever way you can remember and the best way i believe to remember is to follow his teachings and his teaching is so easy self attention that's all nothing else his teaching is silence be with your silence self inquiry is only for the first time when you hear about his teaching you don't have to do self inquiry self inquiry is just to know that these thoughts are not for you you are not any i who has to listen to those those thoughts once you understand that after self inquiry it is all about self attention being an observer staying in your silence and just observing things no association with mind so the manonasha comes with self inquiry but it does not sustain to sustain you have to keep attention on self put your efforts there once these efforts are very deep continuous throughout the day it percolates in your dream in your sleep but don't leave the practice practice will leave you one day don't worry about practice let's say there is a war and army is vigilant on border but then someone says the war is over but if they stay vigilant another couple of days how does it matter just pay attention to self your pure silence don't leave any trace of mind any recognition of ego sorry i took a bit long i don't know keep it one hour om namo bhagavate shri arunachal ramanaya om om shanti shanti